Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 28, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about the predicted weather pattern that is expected to produce two rather strong storms in the Arctic Ocean over the next few days. But before I get into that, I'd like to talk about the fact that the Arctic is now starting tra to transition away from seasonal summer into a seasonal fall pattern. And, and this transition is being driven by a lowering of the angle of the sun in the Arctic. And I'm going to go ahead and play this, this video camera from Barrow. It's a uh, Barrow sea ice webcam. And as you can see, there are now periods of darkness that are starting to traverse the Arctic. And, and so the, the sun itself is, is becoming less of a driver for the Arctic climate at this time. And, and that produces a number of changes. It's also worth noting that there's no sea ice anywhere in sight for, for Barrow, Alaska at this time. And this has become a, a feature of recent years as sea ice has tended to recede greatly into the Beaufort Sea in this region of the world during summertime. So just to note that, that we are at the end, we, are, we are approaching the end of melt season. The historical end of melt season is September 15th or thereabouts for the Arctic Ocean. And as you can see by looking at this green average line for the 80 degree north and above zone, temperatures during this time of year tend to historically fall off if you're looking at historical climatology based on the 1958 to 2002 mean temperature for this zone. Now it's worth noting that the effect of human forced climate change on the Arctic Ocean tends to dominate in the spring, in the fall, and particularly in the winter, as polar amplification or a, a more rapid warming of the polar zone really kicks into high gear during the darker months. And that's due to the fact that the greenhouse gas effect has, it has a stronger effect during times of darkness. And it's one of the reasons if you look at global temperature averages, you tend to see more record high lows during the nighttime being broken than more record daily highs. It doesn't mean that record daily highs are not also broken during times of sunlight, but there is a greater prevalence of record high low temperatures during times of darkness. And since the Arctic goes through a period known as polar night, where it's completely dark for, for many months. The greenhouse gas effect ha has, a, has a rather strong signal, and we can see this in these extraordinary departures during the past winter. It's worth noting that as the angle of the sun lessens, as we start to enter fall, the, the greenhouse gas effect signal tends to increase. And, and so you tend to get more positive anomalies or, or higher than normal temperature anomalies above the baseline. So just some things to think about as I start to talk about storms, because the effect of storms during darker times, it ends up having a, a, a bit of a reverse effect than it does during summertime. Storms have high moisture content and during darker periods they tend to trap more heat and result in more prevailing warmer than average temperatures during times of winter, fall, and, and spring as opposed to during summertime where, where they can tend to cool off the Arctic. So, so just some things to think about. We're, we're in a transitional phase right now, so we're kind of in a hybrid summer-fall phase and the Arctic is, is systemically starting to cool as the angle of the sun dips and we get periods of darkness. But as you can see, the, the anomaly line is starting to drift above, above the mean line. So, so something to think about. 
Now, as we go into the forecast, I'd just like to call your attention to a number of zones, particularly this zone of thin ice and diffuse ice in the East Siberian Sea, which has formed a, a bit of a wedge here, which is a more vulnerable region of ice. And this region of ice here on the Atlantic side of the Arctic, which is greatly reduced is and is in a record low range. It's worth looking at these two zones because this is where we expect a couple of strong storms to develop. One rising up out of the Siberian region, out of eastern Siberia, and one rising up to the east of Greenland. Looking at the present situation, this is a, um, a pressure measure, an atmospheric pressure measure provided by Earth Null School. And the lower the pressure trends toward the purple and, and the red, higher pressure trends toward yellow and white. And so what we see right now looking, this is the pole here over the Arctic, is we see a, 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 rather, uh, a rather robust storm that is presently ongoing in us. Not a super strong storm, but 981 millibars this isn't really a slacker. And this storm has persisted over the central Arctic and is expected to persist over the central Arctic for the next couple of days. I'm going to advance this model. I want you to pay attention to this zone over the East Siberian Sea and this zone over here near Svalbard. So by the time we start to hit August 30th in this GFS forecast model run, we start to see a storm developing in between Greenland and Svalbard and advancing this model a bit for further into late August 30th and early August 31st. We note that this storm is, is starting to kick up a, a relatively powerful intensity with uh, 972 millibars indicated in the GFS model run. I'm going to go ahead and advance this a little bit further. And it's worth noting that the, the right side of the storm dips down into the 971 millibar range. The storm is pulling in very strong winds. I'm going to go ahead and look at winds. Very strong winds up from the south, and, and this will tend to rile the ocean in this zone. We don't, we don't have a, a, a wave measure in this, mod, in this model due to the fact that the, the northern polar zone to the 75 degree north latitude line is, is blotted out, but, but we could expect uh, some rather intense wave actions hitting the edge of this ice zone, that, which has been greatly reduced. Also like to note that a strong storm is starting to develop here in the East Siberian Sea. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip into the ocean zone so we can look at some wave heights. And I'm gonna go ahead and advance this model. So this storm in the East Siberian Sea is expected to dip down to around 968 millibars. And this is expected to rile up the ocean surface. This, these are near seven foot wave heights here. But as we go further, into the future, these wave heights get closer to to 10, and oops, I'm going to back it up. So th these are 12, 13, 14 foot wave heights in the Beaufort Sea, and and these high waves would tend to have a, a rather strong impact on on sea ice in the zone. So so something to keep a look at. I also want to show you. The, the wind patterns related to this particular storm. This storm expected to drop down to around 968 millibars. It's worth noting that the great Arctic cyclone of 2012 dipped down to 966 millibars. So, so a couple of, of rather powerful storms, see 968 millibars in this model indicated, expected to impact the Arctic over the coming days. And it's worth noting that temperatures in the Arctic are expected to range between 1.8 and 1.6 degrees Celsius above average as these storms enter the Arctic. So, so just something to look at for possible impacts on sea ice. Storms tend to spread out the sea ice, but at this time of year, wave impacts can, can have a, a major effect on sea ice. So, so something to keep an eye on. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.